Hello friends! In this tutorial we are going to create a prototype of a fighting game in Unreal Engine 5.1 and we are going to use paired wrestling animations as attacks. I mean wrestling attacks instead of the hit-based attacks animations that are usually being used in fighting games. But in the future videos we will add hit-based attacks as well. I think it will be a series of videos and we will finally create a basic but fully featured fighting game. In the first two videos we will place two characters, make them able to automatically rotate to each other and move around each other. We will then add paired wrestling attacks, which are available for free in the web. And after we create this prototype of a 3D fighting game, in the second video we will learn how to easily turn this into a 2D fighting game, depending on your needs. And we will make it possible to switch between the two modes, using just one setting inside our blueprint. Just a quick disclaimer, it would actually take hundreds and thousands of working hours to create and test a production ready fighting game like Mortal Kombat or Tekken and it would cost a company hundreds of thousands of dollars. So, if it is your actual goal, and if this is why you started watching this video, I recommend you to still follow this tutorial series to get the in-depth understanding of the principles. But, as the solution for your game, I would recommend using my true fighting game engine for Unreal Engine, which is available on Epic Store. It already implements features you may need in a AAA fighting game. You can easily manage multiple characters, attacks, combos and hit reactions through its blueprint system. It also provides a multiplayer support for local and network multiplayer fighting games. I am constantly working on improvements, so if you have an idea of your own fighting game, it is the best choice for you. You can find the link to the true fighting game engine in the description below this video. And now let's start with the tutorial. Let's create an Unreal Engine 5.1 project and we select the third person template and let's give it a name Fighting Game. We hit the Create button. Right, so the project has been created and it is a standard third person game. And we are going to use this scene as our arena for our fighting game. Let me remind that as the main character blueprint in the third person game, we have this blueprint located in the third person blueprints and we will actually be using this as a base for our fighter blueprint. First, let's delete this player start and we are just going to place two fighters to our scene. We just drag and drop our blueprints to the scene. Player 1 and player 2. And Let's align them along the y-axis. Oh, yeah. So we need to set their x location to be the same. So for the first player we have the, the x location 1080. So we set the same location for the second player as well. Let's rotate them face to face. Ninety degrees for the first player, and I think minus ninety degrees for the second player. And as we have removed the player start, we should select a controller, at least for our first player for now. We select the first player, and in its little tab, let's type auto and find. 
auto possess player and we auto possess it to player zero we are not going for now to auto possess the player number for the th second player at the beginning of our tutorial it uh, will just be a dummy uh, for testing our fighting game but later we will possess a controller for it uh, to be able to create uh, a multiplayer game or maybe we will make this character ai driven but for now we leave it as is we do not auto possess it so let's test it run the game and yes we have two players on our scene and we can control our player one now let's first rename uh, this blueprint for, just for clarity and i'm going to name it bp fighter character And now let's open the blueprint to edit. And we want our camera to be placed at the left of the character. If we try to rotate it, we cannot do this for now. And it is because the camera boom currently inherits the player control rotation so we select the camera boom component and in the details tab we type rotation and we disable the use pawn control rotation and now we can rotate the camera boom 90 degrees and we compile and save We now have our camera placed at the right of the character. But now it doesn't look like a fighting game actually, because uh, in the fighting game we used to see our fighter characters automatically turning face to face to each other. Uh, so our first task will be to turn both players face to face to each other but to turn them face to face we will first need to detect the enemy inside our fighter blueprint so let's start with this we save all so let's go to our content drawer and open our bp fighter character blueprint to edit and let's go to the construction script because we are going to find our enemy once uh, during the construction and then the reference to the enemy will be held in a special variable so let's add a new variable here at left uh, near the variables let's hit this little plus icon and let's name the variable enemy and as the variable type we are going to select our bp fighter character so let's just find this plus and we just select the object reference now let's find an empty space <laughs> on our graph and right click and search all actors of class and we get all actors of our class and the class is our bp fighter character itself and as an output we receive an array basically of two actors uh, and one reference will be to the actor itself and another reference will be to its enemy but we don't know actual index so we need to iterate through the array and uh, figure out which reference is actually the reference to the enemy so to iterate let's add a new variable and name it character index 
and we set integer as the type could actually select by but it doesn't matter so much and as the default value let's compile we have zero and that's all right so we drag a connection from out actors and it is array so we need to get an array element so we start typing get and we select the node named get a copy and as an input for our character in index we will be using our newly created variable and it is zero for the first iteration but now we need to create the loop itself so let's right click and type while and we select the while loop node and as a condition we will check if our array element is valid so from the get output we drag a connection and we start typing is valid and we select this function and it returns true if our array element is valid is existing so we place it as a condition for our while loop and now we are going to compare the gotten character to the self reference of the blueprint so we check if we got the reference to self as a as the array element or if it is a reference actually to the enemy so how are we going to do that we drag a connection from the loop body and we create a branch and we get the output of our get array element and we are going to compare it to self so let's type equal and let's right click and type self and we add a note get a reference to self and we compare oh, but we better for clarity choose not equal so let's delete it and one more time we drag a connection and we find not equal node and if it is not equal to itself we set it as a condition for our branch and if it is true we just set our enemy to this array element but it, if it is false it means that we actually got a reference to self we just increase our character index so we draw a connection and we search for in Increment int and we increment our character index but to keep it simple we have to also increment it after we have set our enemy to finish up the loop we could actually break a loop by creating a breakable loop but it is a more simple way and it is not resource expensive as we just perform this loop two times for each character uh, when we construct our, our level and now let's go to the event graph tab and here we are going to rotate our character face to face to its enemy every tick so first let's create a new function and name it face to face we open it now we need to find the vector to rotate our character towards its enemy and it is pretty simple because we have a very handful function and let's add it to the graph so we right click and we start typing look at and we select the node named find look at rotation 
and as the input we should provide the location of our character and uh, the location of our enemy as the target so let's right click type actor location and select the get actor location and we leave the target as self for the first node and now we duplicate this node but for the second node we will detect the location of our enemy so we drag the enemy variable and drop it to the graph and we select the get enemy and we connect it to the target of the second node and we connect these two pins let's compile and save just in case the editor crashes and now we need to set the control rotation for our character so we right click and we search for get controller and it has self as the target and we drag a connection and type control rotation and we select the function name set control rotation right and we connect the face to face input to this node set control rotation but we need to provide a new rotation but you know we are only rotating around the z axis uh, is what is named yaw so let's right click this new rotation pin and select the split struct pin from the menu all right and we also split the return value of this fine look at rotation and we only connect that output to the that input of the set control rotation but as the rotations for the x and for the y axis we just need to set the same values that we had before so we just get controller once again And we get the control rotation and we split the output pin and we just provide the current values of the x and y and let's now save and compile right and let's now go back to the event graph and at the tick event we right click on the empty space type tick and select the event tick right and every tick we are going to call our face to face function let's now save and compile all right and let's check it out let's run the game and try and it doesn't work it is not going to turn face to face to the enemy and you know why because we should go back to our blueprint and select the root node the bb fighter character you see we have set up the values for the controller rotation but we should make sure that our fighter character is ready to use these values so let's select the root node and in the details tab let's type controller and we should select the use controller desired rotation to be true 
and also the option named use controller rotation yarl and we compile and save and let's try it now uh -huh. and you see our character is rotating face to face when he moves around the enemy you may ask why the enemy is not rotating face to face to our character it uses the same blueprint so it should yes it actually should but we haven't yet set the controller for this enemy character so for now as a temporary solution to make the enemy rotate as well we are going to do the following we go back to our bp fighter character face to face graph and after this set control rotation node we also add a node named set actor rotation It is a temporary solution, we are going to edit it later in the next videos when we will be providing our enemy with some functionality. So for now we split this struct pin and from this find look at rotation node Z output pin we also drag a connection to this Z pin. But for the X and the Y axis, we are going to get the current X and Y rotation of the enemy actor. So we just drag and drop the enemy to our graph. And we drag a connection and we type get actor rotation. And we split the output pin and we connect the X and the Y to the input pins of the set actor rotation. And we save and compile. And let's now check it out. Uh huh. And you see our enemy is now rotating face to face as well. And there is uh, also a couple of really quick changes I would like to do. Uh, first, uh, you see when I press the W and S, I move forward and back. And when I press the D key and A key, I move right and left. And I would like to switch this way of input and it is really quick to do because we are used to use the D to move right in the fighting game and A to move left and we used to use the W to move this direction and to use the S key to use this direction all right by the X value so we are just going to switch this input uh, to do so we go to our content drawer and we navigate to content third person input and we open the IMC default data asset and we expand the IA move and let's expand to the W and S mappings and for the W we expand the modifiers and we remove this swizzle input axis value all right and for the s we leave the negate but we also remove the swizzle input axis values all right and now we expand the a and d keys and under the modifiers For the A key, we add the swizzle input axis values, all right. And for the D near the modifiers, we also add 
this weasel input axis values right and let's check it now uh-huh now d and a work as intended but we should check the negate for the w and s because they're inverted like right now so we open the imc default one more time and for the w we add a modifier named negate and for the s we remove this modifier named negate and we save all right and let's check it now right and it works and now one more really quick detail you see when i move right and left my character is tending to move backwards a little i could actually use the forward and the right input at the same time to fix this but i believe that for a fighting game we would actually like our character to move something around the circle around their enemy when we press right and left all right so let's add a really quick change to the to the third person blueprint so we navigate to the third person blueprints and we open our bp fighter character blueprint we go to the event graph and we now look for the movement input graph here and you see when we add the left right input we would like to add a little bit of a forward vector to the move, move right left so how are we going to do that we right click and we get the get control rotation and this node we split the return values and we place one more node named get forward vector and like above we connect these two pins and now we want to scale this vector a little bit and then add it to this vector uh, to modify the right and left direction so it should move a little bit forward when we press right or left on our controller so we drag a connection from our action value x pin and we search for multiply Right. And now we drag a connection from our forward vector output and connect it to this multiply. And yes, you know I would also add a multiplier to make it a little bit less. So drag a connection from this x value, multiply once again. Let's set here maybe 0 0.6 and then connect it to that pin because we actually don't want to add it too much forward direction. And now we just drag a connection from here and type add. We want to add the forward vector to our right vector. And now we get the output and connect it to our world direction. All right, and we don't touch this section. Let's forward backwards. Should work as it is working now. And now we compile and save. And let's run the game. And I press the W, and you see it makes a circle. W. 
S W S. Yes, it is a circular movement we would like to actually see. And when I press A and D, it works as intended. At this stage of the tutorial, we are not going to add a blend space, but later we will also set up directional movement animations for our characters. So when it runs left and right, you know this step left and step right animations. But for now, we will leave it as it is now. And now we are ready to add our attacks. I would like to start with the varied wrestling animations because there seems to be no tutorials on this and it is a really interesting topic how to add a kind of paired wrestling animations to a fighting game. So we are ready to start doing this. And now we just need to download a couple of animations. Uh, we will be using a free animation package named uh, Ramster Dead animation package. Uh, and from that package we will be just using a couple of fighting animations, I think this one you see in the first plane now, and this one. So, how do we download them? I will place a link in the description below this video, and after you go to the link, you just hit the download button, and in that page, you hit the add to cart. And then you, you go to your shopping cart and you see the price is a half of dollar but you can get it for free uh, just hit the checkout and as the discount code uh, you type sample and you hit the apply button and you see you can now get it for zero you just need to fill in your data, but there is no required to enter your credit card data. You just enter your email, home address, name, etc. And after making this free purchase, you will get a link to download this animation package. So I have already downloaded it. And here is it. So after you download it, you just unzip it. And you go to the folder, and we now need to unzip this folder named Ramster Z Epic Mega Jump FBX only. So we unzip it as well. Right, and here we have a lot of animations, but we are going to use just four of them. Actually, two movesets, one named Paired Press Up Throw for Attacker, and a corresponding animation for the victim, and another Paired Push Show for Attacker, and the corresponding one for the victim. So we go to our project, we open our content drawer and our the content folder. Let's create a new folder and name it fighting animations. But as we have the Ramster Z package um, designed for the Unreal 4 skeleton. Let's first import them to a new folder. We, under the fighting animations we create a new folder and name it UE4. And right away let's create one more new folder and name it UE5. 
is we are going to retarget them after we import the animations. So we go to the folder, we have just unzipped the animations too, and we get, select these four animations I have mentioned before, and we just drag them and drop to our Unreal project to our UE4 folder that we have just created. And as the skeleton, we select the SK mannequin skeleton as it is the skeleton for the UE4 mannequin. And we hit the button named Import All. Alright, and we see that all the animations have been imported for the UE4 skeleton. Let's save all and let's retarget them for the UE5 skeleton, which we are using in our fighting game. To do so, we select all the four animations with shift click, we right click, and we select the retarget animation assets. And and after that we select the duplicate and the retarget animation assets. The retargeter window pops up and as an I key retargeter we select the RTG UE4 money to UE5 money. Right? And as the retarget mesh, we are going to select our ASCII AM Queen simple. And let's add a suffix to the names of our animations after we retarget them. Uh, we just uh, type here underscore Queen. And we are going to change the output folder, so we hit this change button. We expand the fighting animations and we select the UE5 folder that we have just created. We hit OK and we retarget. And that's great. Now we have all the animations retargeted to the queen. And we save all. And what we want to do now, let's select all the four animations once again. Right click and we are going to create animation montages from these animations. So we select create, create any montage. Right. Let's open just to check. And you see our montages are using a slot named default slot. All right. Let's close it and save all once again. Now we want to add an attack data structure which will contain the attacker montage and the victim reaction montage and also the distance between two players during an attack. So we go to our content drawer, navigate to content, third person, blueprints, we right click, select blueprints and select structure there. So we have created a new structure and let's name it attack data. Let's open it to edit. And let's name the first variable attack montage. Or better attacker montage. And as the type, we select animation montage. Let's type any montage. Right. Now we click the add variable button and we add the second montage and we name it victim montage. And now we add one more variable. And we name it distance. 
and as the type for this variable we select the float and we save and now let's go to our bp fighter character blueprint and below the variable stop we are going to create a new array which will contain the attack data structures as its members uh, because we are going to have several attacks in any fighting game and in our case i guess it will be two attacks just for example but anyway so near the variables tab we click this little plus icon and we name this new variable attacks and as the type we select our attack data structure and here at right we make it an array so you click this little arrow and we select array and now we compile the blueprint and we save and what we want to do now we want to add the both attacks we have imported and both reactions as the default values to structs in our array let's check out our montages ue5 and you see we have this one for the first attack and this one for the first victim and this one for the second attack and this one for the second victim all right we can just open to check it out all right so we go to our blueprint once again select the attacks and we add a new array element this will be the first attack we can just select it press up throw attacker this is what we want for this and for the second we are going to add the corresponding montage for the victim you see this week and as a distance i guess i remember it so i will type 97 maybe i remember it wrong but anyway later we may tweak it with ease we have added our first array element let's let's compile and save and let's add one more array element this will be our second attack and as the attacker montage we select this paired push show attacker montage and as the victim montage we select corresponding victim montage all right and as the distance and don't actually remember it but i guess it should be 78 as for now we leave it as it is later we may adjust it and this compile and we save so now we have two attack montages now we need to create an input mac option for our attack so under this third person we select the input we open the actions subfolder and let's create here a new input action you see we already have them for jump look move and we right click select input and here we select the input action and let's name it ia attack maybe i execute attack right i a execute attack and we open it edit as the action description we will just write execute attack this is just for clarity and we leave all the values as they are now because we want the type of this input action to be boolean because either we do attack or we not so we save now close this window 
and let's now navigate a level up to the input folder open the IMC default make collapse all and add a new mapping so near the mappings we add this plus button and we select the IA execute attack and to set a key on our keyboard for this input action we may just press on this little keyboard and I now press the F button on my keyboard and you see it automatically adds this key and let's add one more key for a gamepad just in case if we are using it so let's hit this plus once again and under the gamepad I don't know I will select the gamepad left trigger to execute attack All right you may select any you like and we save it but you know for the clarity I would actually go back to the actions folder and rename it I, I execute attack back to just I, I attack it's just logical because we don't put it as I, I execute jump and naming may be really important uh, when we have a lot of things in our architecture and we should always think about it so we just leave it as IA attack great now let's go to our blueprints and open the BPE fighter character and in its event graph let's find an empty space and add the node for our newly created input action we right click and we start typing IA attack and we select this enhanced action event we compile and save and before we are going to implement its logic let's uh, add two custom events that we will call for the attacker character and for the victim character so let's right click on the empty space and uh, type add event we select add custom event and name this custom event execute attack All right and one more custom event and let's name this one execute attack victim it's just for the future to have it all prepared and now as soon as we press the F key or any other we define for the, this input action once it is triggered we want first to, to make all the checks we need to perform before the attack is going to be executed and at the end we will flash this event to call the execute attack logic so first let's get the enemy variable and drag it to the graph get enemy and let's check if it is actually valid because we might forgot to add the second character on our map let's drag a connection and type is valid and if yes we drag a connection from the triggered and if it is valid we could actually call our execute attack event right away but let's first uh, check if the distance between the enemy and our first character is not too large that our two players are not too far from each other let's drag one more connection from the enemy and type get distance to and 
and the first input will be our enemy and the other actor to input will be our the reference to self so we get the distance between our first player and its enemy and we check if this distance is less than a certain number let's type here less and if the distance between characters is less than say 300 we create a branch after this is valid node if it is true then we execute attack but if they are too far from each other we just do nothing we compile and save and now we are ready to execute the attack by the way, here is a typo in the second. I just want this letter to be capital. Now we are ready to implement this execute attack node that we have just added a call to. So let's make some more free space here. And the first thing we want to do after we start executing attack, we want to disable input to not interrupt the attack. So we drag a connection and type disable input and we select. And we should pass a player controller as one of the inputs. To do so, we generally do the following. We right click, type get control. Controller, the controller object reference is returned and we cast it to player controller. And we generally pass, we connect this and pass the player controller to this node. No, so we could do so. But we actually will need the player controller pretty often in the future so let's just remove these two nodes that we have just added and create a new variable named player controller we will save the reference to this uh, to the player controller in this variable as the type, we select player controller object reference. All right. And the first time we get the player controller is when we begin play. So we just zoom out and find the event begin play. You see? And here are two nodes where we actually get the player controller once. And in this place, we will just set this player controller variable. So after the cast to player controller, we type set player controller and we set our variable. And we drag a connection from here to here. We can also do this for clarity, but it actually doesn't matter. So now we have a variable containing our player controller. Let's go back to our execute attack and we connect these two nodes and we get our variable containing our player controller we drag it to the graph get player controller and we pass it to the corresponding input pin right let's compile now we want to get our attacks array and i think for now we are going to get a random element 
from this array and perform a random attack. To iterate through the attacks array, let's add a new variable and name it attack index. And as its type, we select integer. And its default value will be zero. It's all right. And now we drag a connection from the attacks and get a copy of an array element. Get a copy. And as the index, we drag our get attack index and we pass it as the array index. All right? But we want to set the attack index to a random number between 0 and 1 in our case as our array currently only has two elements. So, from the text, we drag another connection and we get the length of the array and we pass its value to a function named random integer in range. But we pass the length as the max we break this link and here will be zero. And now, just after we execute the disable input, let's set our attack index to this random integer. So, we drive a connection, we set attack index and we pass our random integer set this variable's value, right? Let's move this node for clarity. And now in our components tab, let's select the capsule component and drag it to the graph. What we want to do is to move our character our attacker, our character executing attack, not a victim. Uh, we want to move it to the dis distance he needs to perform successful attack. Because you know all paired animations have separate distances between characters, so we need to take this in mind. We drag this capsule component, drag a connection from here, and type move component two. And from this set, we drag a connection to move. And we want to preserve the relative rotation as it is. So we just right click and get actor rotation. And we connect its output value to the target relative rotation, right? But we need to calculate the target relative location. To do so, we need to know the distance between the players. So here, where we get the attack data, let's split this struct pin. And as the output, we have our attacker montage, victim montage, and distance. Now, let's drag the enemy to our graph get enemy draw a connection and type get actor location but we also want to know the direction so we drag one more connection from the enemy and type get actor forward vector Let's make some free space here. And as you possibly remember, our two characters are being rotated face to face to each other in real time. So the actor forward vector is actually the direction we want to move our capsule component towards the enemy. So now we just want to multiply this forward vector to our distance. We drag a connection, we type multiply, and as the input, 
we drag the distance oh yeah and as the output we have a vector and now we just need the sum of these two vectors so we drag a connection from the get actor location we type plus add all right and as the second input we drag this one and let's pass the return value to the target relative location all right and once we have moved to the distance of attack we may play the animation montage we see we have got this attacker montage so we drag a connection and type play montage and as the in skeletal mesh component we drag our mesh component from the component stop and pass it to this input and as the montage to play we get the attacker montage drag a connection to here and let's now compile and save and now we need to execute the reaction to the attack by the victim uh, first of all once completed we are going to if you remember we have disabled the input so now we want to enable it once the planned montage is completed so from the on completed drug connection and we type enable input and as the player controller we drag our player controller variable get player controller and drag a connection here this input all right and now we should call this execute attack victim event but we execute it not for the current character but for the enemy uh, to do so we need to call this event from the enemy variable and we need to somehow pass the uh, attack index because we want to execute the victim reaction so let's select this node and let's add an input let's first compile uh, and here in the details tab near the inputs we hit this plus and we name it index and as the type we specify integer let's name it actually attack index now from here get the enemy and drag it to our graph get enemy and from this output we drag a connection and we, we should call the event named execute attack victim for the enemy so we type execute attack victim and as the target we set the reference to the enemy and as the index we drag this attack index and pass it to the event and now in this uh, the second character is implemented using the same blueprint but it is another object object so here we get a command to execute the victim montage event and we get the index of the array element uh, containing the current attack so we drag our attacks array to the scene to our graph and we get a copy of an array element and as the index we pass this and we drag and drop our mesh component from the component stop get all right and we, we should play a montage so we drag a connection from the event 
and as the input we pass the current mesh and here we split the struct pin you remember we are getting the attack data structure and we pass the victim montage here but i have remembered something here instead of the random integer in range we should just use random integer uh, because you know all our arrays are have zero based index and uh, when we get the length of the array it is the actual number of elements and here we could get a random integer that is greater than the last index of the array so we just remove this node we just get random integer not random integer in range as we had before All right compile and save let's now test it mm -hmm. and it looks like it works that's it for today in the next video we will learn how to position the camera depending on the distance between the characters and we will also make it possible to turn our fighting game into a 2d mode